Hello, I'm Natalia and I'm a social and video content marketer at Clockify and in today's interview, I'll be talking to Jordan Guyton. So I'm so super happy to have you here. Thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. I've heard so much about you from my colleagues and I've seen all of your social media and all of your interviews already. So it's really cool to have you here today. Um, So I know a lot about you, but um, just for our viewers and for people that haven't had the pleasure to meet you yet, would you mind giving us kind of um, an introduction um, for our audience and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Jordan Guyton. I am a content coach and CEO of Virgin Media. We are a coaching company helping female entrepreneurs tell their story on social media using content. And um, I started my business in 2010. Um, I mean, 2020. I started in production in 2010. Um, so everything from behind the camera casting, I used to work for the Maury show. I was in front of the camera. I was behind, like, I literally did all the things. Um, and then when the pandemic hit, um, I was tired of collecting unemployment. And so I decided to start a business and it was, I didn't know what I was doing. I was making graphics for any business open in Harlem at the time. Um, which were restaurants and was just hoping that someone would hire me to create social content for them. Um, And once I knew that I really wanted to do this, I hired a business coach and started building my business and honing in on female entrepreneurs and just amplifying their voices because I feel like we are not heard enough and our stories aren't told enough. And, you know, within a year of my business, I crossed the six figure mark. We're approaching two years and we're helping over a hundred women all over the world um, just really get unapologetic and bold and confident and courageous and yeah, just showing up and showing out. And it's, it's literally been the most beautiful thing I think I've ever experienced. Congratulations to that. So that's a lot of, a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you've had quite a journey. So I know that you've been in the entertainment and business industry and, um, you went from product assistant, right, to social media expert and everything in between, as you just said now. So why did you pick or why did you choose the line of work that in right now? So I think that it's a good question. I mean, I chose content and social media just because production and content has been in my bones since I got out of college. I think I, I went really into social media was because I just felt a pulse for it. I felt already called to it. I already felt like I knew what I was doing in my own social, um, that it honestly was the best way to tell stories on a free level, right? I didn't have to be hiring a production company. I didn't have to run out of space. I didn't have to get a big camera. I literally could be in my little tiny corner desk in my apartment and connect with people all over the world to help them tell their story. And I just think that, you know, when, when you're blessed with the ability to see greatness in someone else and kind of pull that out of them, um, whether it's on social, whether it's in an agency commercial, whether it's in a movie, whether it's on the Maury show and we're doing DNA drama, um, I want to do that. Um, and I just fell in love with being able to, to do that at a level that didn't require me to, to, to break my pockets or to do the most. I see. Well, yeah, you're right. You can literally do that from anywhere, especially if you love what you do. Um, yeah. So that, that's a great point that you mentioned. So uh, a couple of minutes ago, you mentioned that 2020 hit all of us. Um, no one really escaped being unharmed from it, unfortunately. Um, but so production stopped and a lot of other things stopped probably as well. Um, so you, you started from scratch, right? So you started your own business, um, you're empowering other people. So what kind of triggered that? And um, besides, obviously, it being 2020 and made a turning point in, in terms of, you know, facing new challenges and, um, you know, just figuring out maybe, I don't know, the next couple of steps in your career. Yeah, so I think that... So the question is more so what led me to want to empower people or yeah exactly so so from when you started from scratch 
yeah um kind of was it your own challenge that you faced that you wanted to help other people in their own challenges or was it something entirely different or was it a combination of other things yeah that's a good question I mean to be quite candid my 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 initial thought was I want to make money like I I I need a client like I got to figure out like if I got to if I got to do something on Canva, if we got to talk on the phone, like I needed to make money. Um, but I think what flipped the switch for me was the emails or the text or the, the private messages or the DMs where people would see the beauty in just being themselves. You really helped me just show up. You really pushed me outside of my box. You really, I didn't know I could, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like people just want that little, just push of permission that you're enough, you're worthy, it's okay, you can do it, you're quirky, you got a gap, you can't dance, you're weird, okay, it's fine, right? And I think that once that, just that simple idea was kind of like unhinged in my brain, I was like, Oh yeah, I want more of this. Like I want, I want to pull that out of you, and 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 then to see profit come on the other side of that, to see women actually making money and sustaining a business from just showing up. I was like, I gotta, I that's that's my sport. Like I gotta play that game. Like it's just, it's beautiful. You found yourself. Yeah, that's amazing. So why do you think people need that extra push from someone else? Why can't we push our own selves? Like nobody can do that. But yeah. why? Why do you think so? That's a good question. I mean, I think I've started to uncover that answer over time. Um, I do think, you know, entrepreneurship is one big, messy, ghetto, wild journey of just self-exploration. Um, but I think that over time, as I'm approaching two years in my business, one of the most beautiful pieces of this journey for me has been community. And it's something that I've built inside of my program because I think that, you know, a lot of times we, we feel like this authenticity, you know, does come from within, but I think that there has to be a communal space of just safeness where people can catch those feelings and can allow you to be yourself so that when you do step in front of the camera and do your reels or you do hop on TikTok in front of an audience that you don't even know, you have that skin and that muscle that's already built from your friends in that community. They're like, girl, that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, sis, that was so amazing. And you're like, okay, I can get on TikTok. I can do this. I can get on, on Instagram and I can show up, right? And it's that it's that tough skin that you have to build because I feel like social can be so brutal. Like it can, it can feel so overwhelming. It could feel so daunting. It could feel so, it's just a lot, right? If, if you're not prepared um, to show up as yourself. And I really think just having someone to catch that or to push that um, makes a world of a difference. I agree. You need, you need, uh, you need someone to be your back, right? You need someone to hold your back. I agree. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. So um, you've mentioned before um, that uh, the, all of your traffic is organic, right? Or most of it is organic. Um, so how have you kind of developed your own strategies? What they, did you develop them from scratch, learning from your own mistakes and, um, you know, getting noticed online and um, like, how did you do you, you know do some analysts of you know uh, instagram's algorithm or how, how did you kind of get to where you are right now when yeah. it to traffic so all my traffic has been organic i started when i started my business i had almost six thousand followers um and a lot of that came from the tv stuff it came from commercials i actually lost a whole bunch of weight at one time so i had a whole bunch of ladies that were just like just ride or dies from like years and years so like that was like my crew um, and I, when I did start my business, I was in this like imposter casket of like, okay, they know me as this. I'm about to show up and say, I got this little business. They're going to be like, girl, what you know about? Like, I like wanted to throw up every time I thought about posting because I was, this was also new to me. And I was, I was asking people to hire me right in a new space. Um, and I think that my growth was definitely something that was a lot of trial and error, a lot of documentation, a lot of uncomfortable moments. Um, 
But I also leaned into the thought of one, it was my page, my privacy. So I could show as much as I wanted, pull back as much as I didn't. Um, but also to utilize all the features that these platforms have. have. So in, in this instance, I'm talking about Instagram. And I think that one of the things I really hone in on and teach my students is to utilize the power of live video, utilize the power of just video content in general, um, whether it's short form, whether it's pre-recorded, whether it's live, because it really has helped me build a deeper connection. It's a virtual handshake that you have with your audience. And I think once I really tapped into that and people could see me sweating and being nervous online and people could hear my story and I could be emotional and I've cried multiple times because I'm a cancer in my videos. Um, but I think that that's one of the, the main things people say to me is why they hired me or why they follow me or why they love to be in my community is, is the, the video connection and that energy that they get me in real time. Um, and so when I do teach and when I do lay out strategy for my clients, we do lean heavily into video content and getting comfortable on camera and, and carrying your notes and having a framework and a structure. Um, because I think a lot of times, if you haven't been on camera, if all, a lot of us, this is very foreign, this is very weird. Like, why am I talking to a green dot? Like, it's all exactly. of these emotions happen, right? And so you have to be set up in a space where you feel like you have a blueprint or you have a roadmap. Um, and I think that's when it started to kick off. So I started going live and then I hit my 10K and then reels came out. And so I started doing, like, I was doing one reel a week when I first started doing reels and I grew by like 30,000. And there's this huge misconception. I'm sure it works, but I just don't teach it. There's this huge misconception that you have to post multiple times a day and every single day. And it's just, I can't do it. I don't preach it. That's not my ministry. I can't do it. Um, but it was, it was zero to one. And now it's one to two, maybe three if I'm feeling froggy, right? But I, I think that it's leaning into that video content, finding a cadence that's comfortable for you to show up, right? In your best energy. And then last but not least, having a framework or a blueprint or a strategy um, that you can follow and rinse and repeat over and over and over again. That's very insightful. So um, according to you, you, I mean, I'm going to ask you, do you think that there can be or that there is a universal you know, business strategy or is every, you know, is, is the path basically to expansion based more on, you know, on the individual and on, you know, depending on each person or each business? Great question. So all audiences are not created equal, right? So what your audience might like might not be what my audience likes. The way that you show up, right? There are some people who have audiences that just love to see them in a carousel, just love to see multiple looks. They could care less if you're on video, they could care less if you will laugh. Girl, just show me, show me, show, show me the carousel, right? So it's it's a lot of, again, that trial and error and testing all of the features to see one, what your audience loves, two, your, again, your cadence, and then reviewing back on that content and not reinventing the wheel and starting to lean into what's really working to develop your strategy. Okay. Okay. And there's a quote that um, I want to ask you about to elaborate more on. So you said that um, you can create engaging content, right? That sells if you get clear on your content delivery. So does that have to do with what we just mentioned now? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, your content delivery falls under, you know, a few things. It falls under who you're called to serve, right? Your audience, you know, the people that you're pouring into and giving value, your content delivery, depends on your best energy, right? I think getting consistent in how you're showing up when you're feeling good, when you're feeling your best um, and really putting out quality work um, that you can be proud of and look back on, even if it's embarrassing, but you're like, oh yeah, that was cute. I'm glad I did that, right? Uh, content delivery looks like pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone, right? I didn't want to go live. I thought I've been on camera. I could do this. I was sweating every single time. I would hop off and I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm not doing that again. Like literally every single time. And it's like all of that magic happens outside of that. Um, and, and that's your content delivery. If it flops, it flops. Archive it if you hate it that much, right? But at least try it um, because you never know who you're blessing or what breakthrough you're bringing somebody through um, by getting outside of your comfort zone. 
So how do you get out of your outside of your comfort zone? Like what's the easiest way? It's not yeah. ever easy, right? But what's like the yeah. first step? Even though it's a difficult step, what is the first step? Uh, that's a good question. Um I think the first step to getting outside of your comfort zone. I guess there's two. The first one is to commit. I think that's very overlooked, just like a verbal or written like declaration of like, this is what I'm going to do. Like, like claiming that, putting that out in the universe, whatever, whatever you believe in praying, whatever, like that, you know, committing to that. And then I really think it comes down to the reps, you know, that word consistency is such a simple piece of advice and easy to get consistent, show up but very few people have mastered that skill of just being consistent and putting in the reps over and over and over. And I think that's what leads to just that peace and that confidence and that courage of, of just doing it over and over and over again. It's good advice. It's a good first step, a difficult one, but it's, it's, oh. it's, it's, you know, a concrete piece of advice to actually start doing, even if it's outside your comfort zone. So that's, that's good to hear. Um, so you, I mean, you, you do a lot of things and all in between you're getting outside of your comfort zone, you're thinking and, um, you know, new strategies, helping other people. So what about your, you know, the time outside of all of that? So how do you organize all of these things and stay productive without, you know, losing your mind, basically? How, how do you do that? Well, first, Jesus, because listen, I just don't know. Um, how do I? I don't know. I think so. I'm reading this really good book called Essentialism. Mm -hmm. um, I think his name's Greg, and his last name starts with an M, but I could be totally completely wrong of his last name. But it really has opened my eyes to just stripping away the non essentials. I think when we start a business, it's very simple and then we start to think about milestones and growing and scaling and so we start adding 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 and then you find yourself at a point in life and business and all the things that are going on that you're like oh my gosh I'm doing a lot right and this book has really reframed just what I think about time what I where I put my energy where I put my efforts even using Clockify has been like a huge like just a huge self-awareness piece because you really figure out where you can't get it back. You can't get your time back. Right. So you really figure out where you're spending it. And then you have to decide, is it worth it? Am I getting the ROI that I, that I really need? Is it, is it, is it moving the needle? Is it giving me peace? Is it giving me joy? And I think that having or taking that assessment of the essential versus the non-essential has really been, it's been a game changer. Um, there's just things right now that we're starting to strip in our business that I'm like, we've been doing this for a year. <laughs> what? I'm hiring people for this. Like, it's just little things like that. Um, I think has been, has been an eye opener, even, even not small things, but big things like delegating or hiring people to help me with things that I could do, but it's time, you know, it's time I could be spending with my husband. It's time that I could be spending watching 90 day fiance, right? Like it's, it's just buying back your time. And I think that's, what's really been beautiful is just getting, getting self-aware of where my time is going and then being very clear on if this is essential. Um, that's really been really helpful for me. If it's worth your time, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So you mentioned Cockify. So how did you even hear about Cockify and, um, when did you start using it? That's a great question. Um, I feel like it had to be in like one of the programs that I was in or like a coaching program. I'm all about like investing in yourself and learning all the things, even if it costs money. Um, but I feel like one of the coaches that I worked with was talking about time tracking and they mentioned that there were free, like free platforms where you could check your time. And I'm all, I'm all about a deal. And so I started Googling and then I think that's when you guys came up. And there was another one too. I don't remember what it was called that I tried, but it was, it was too complex. Like I loved the fact that I could just be like type, start, type, start. Oh wait, I have been eating for a very long time. Let me delete that. Let me edit that. Like that was just really cool. Um, and it allowed me to, again, think about like, 
what I really need to do, like what Jordan has to do, what I can delegate, like what I can do. Okay, talk to I, okay, great. Right. Eating, I have to do. Showing up live, I have to do. Mm-hmm. Writing this email, delegate, right? And then things that I can also eliminate. So there was stuff that was taking an hour, two hours, where I was just like, can we either scale this back or get rid of it? Uh, and so, yeah, I believe it was a referral of doing the action. Because even when I pulled my audience about do you time track a while ago, a lot of them were like, no, what is that? How do you time track? And I was like, oh my God, do I have to do a piece of content on this? Because people didn't even, but I didn't know. So let me not play my audience. Um, but they didn't know that it was a thing. Um, and so I do it every so often once a quarter for sure. Um, just to see like, am I playing games or like, do I need to tighten up a little bit? So it has been so helpful. So it keeps you on track. That's good. Absolutely. That- that's good. Cool. It's good that we have, you know, some things that keep us on track, um, whether they're apps or just, you know, certain things that we do during our day to keep us productive and on track. Um, yeah. So using Clockify, what would you say is your most efficient way of using it? So like how, which is the best way in your opinion to use Clockify? Clockify. Yeah. So when I use it, so I have a monitor and then I also have my laptop. So mm-hmm. I put Clockify on my monitor. And then in the morning, like I'll start my task, uh, we'll type it in and start and work on it. Stop it. Sometimes I forget like again, eating or like watching a YouTube video and then I'll have to like go back and edit it. But I do like doing it from my desktop and then going back and reviewing. I also had my assistant Clockify her, her stuff as well so that I can see what's not what's taking her so long. That sounds so stupid. But to see like how much time she's spending on a task. Mm-hmm. Um, again, going back to the eliminating or trying to see if there's a more efficient way for her to do it. Um, and I think that's also been helpful too. So it's not just for me. I've also had my team um, utilize it as well. That's cool. That's cool. So you get to see, you know, the bigger picture of how all of your time is being used. Absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, and then since you mentioned Instagram and your followers, so in one of your recent stories, I think it was one of your stories, you mentioned that you usually plan, um, that you like to plan a month ahead. Is that right? Like mm-hmm. how, how, how does that go? And how often do you stick to the month, the monthly plan? That's a good question. So I usually try to do like a bird's eye quarterly and then I have like specific, like not milestones, like a focus, specific focuses um, for each month. And then I break it down every month at the top of the month. Um, And then usually I use my Sundays to plan ahead. But the really big reason for me planning a month in advance is just so I'm not overwhelmed with all the things that I have to do. So I plan my content or I try plan my content a month in advance, but then like I plan out my launches, right? So if I'm doing a workshop, if I'm doing, if I'm launching my group coaching program, I like to see that ahead of time. Um, and so one of the things I'm doing this month actually is doing, well, I haven't announced it yet, but I'm announcing it tomorrow. I'm doing a content planning workshop um, for July for my, my community. Um, so they can feel what planning is, like what it feels like and how it just makes you feel just good. Even if you don't cross it all off your list, it's like, okay, I know in July, I want five new clients. I'm going to be posting this many times. Like it's, it's just, it's just amazing. Like I can't even, I can't explain it anymore. Like having it planned is, is going to be, it's going to be amazing. So having a plan kind of makes life easier as well, right? Even if you don't get to do everything from your plan, it kind of makes it easier when you go to bed at night, you don't have to think about everything that might happen or might do. If you've got a kind of a plan or a complete plan, ready right? I agree 100% okay and um so obviously I mean you, you know we we both seem to agree that you know having good time management uh, skills is very crucial <laughs> so what which concrete time management skills have proven useful to you do you have any specific ones or you know a combination that's a good question you have a good question today okay <laughs> Um, time management methods. So I like, I don't, I forgot what they were. I think they were called, I don't remember. I think they were called like the cave or something. Some event that I went to in New York a while ago. And when I still live there, I live in LA now, but it was when we were still in person. So it was before COVID, but you came in 
It was amazing. They gave you lunch, right? And then you had to put your lunch away and they did this presentation about time management. And so after that, like we learned all about the importance, what happens when you go to your phone and then your productivity increases by 20 minutes and you try to get back into your task, like all this cool stuff. And so then we got into a work sprint. And so for 45 minutes, it, he played some like white noise. We ate before for a reason because they don't want you eating while you're in a work sprint. We learned all about productivity before so that, that we know and we set up our minds before the work sprint and literally no phones were allowed and we just worked for 45 minutes straight and you come out of that work sprint and you literally feel like you've been working for like three hours because it's so laser focused on one task and so I try to do that um and then take 15 minutes to like either go outside and get some sun drink some water whatever the case is but those like focused laser don't open any tabs don't have your messages up put your slack on mute all of that is like incredible um so we try to do that with our students we have um something that's called creative flow once a month and we open a zoom room and our students come in for 45 minutes to an hour and they bring one content goal to work on for that time so it could be batching your captions engaging with your audience planning your next live whatever that looks like um and you just go ham uh so that you can start to get that stuff done the solid advice so focus laser focus uh, in a certain time so basically like time boxing in a way absolutely that's cool that's absolutely. cool mm -hmm. so um if you could go back in time um what advice would you give to yourself you know five ten years ago when you were in the beginning of all of this oh gosh um five ten years ago So five or 10 years ago, I was in my 20s in New York City. The world was my oyster. There was no COVID. Um, I think I would say, I think I would say that it's never too late to like change your destiny or change directions, right? Like I think for the, not the longest time, but for a long time, I thought that acting was going to be it, like being on camera, like being in the entertainment world was it. And there were times in that journey where I was like, well, I don't really want to do this. Like, I don't really want to audition. I don't want to be in another commercial. Right. But I thought I've been doing this for 10 years, not at that point, but I've been doing this for a while. I moved to New York for this. Like, that's why you're here. And I think I, I think it would have been nice to know that like, it's okay to do something else. Even, even if you have sweat equity invested, even if you have time invested, training, school, all of that, like if it's not there, like if it's not a hell yes, then it's a hell no. And it's okay to, you know, shift and, and, and go on another path to try it out. Yeah, I agree. It's never too late to do anything or change anything if you want to. So I agree 100%. Um, so what would your advice be um, when it comes to, you know, successful people or people trying to be successful when they experience burnout? So how do you kind of go, if especially if you're doing your own business, how do you go from, you know, separating your business from your personal life? Uh, that's enough. Where, where are these questions. Uh, how do you separate your business from your personal life? um intention mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. um i think that I, i've been hearing this a lot i think you have to schedule joy um i think that's such a beautiful thing of like intentionally scheduling time for you whether it's by yourself with your loved ones i think both by yourself with other people. sorry babe i love being by myself um it's beautiful uh i think that knowing that you are not your business, that they are two separate entities. Um, so like that money in that bank account is not your money, it's the business money, is it this, this your money, right? So getting very, very uh, clear on that. I think that separating your business from your personal is setting boundaries um, and enforcing those boundaries. Boundaries that only work when you enforce them. Um, so if you don't work Fridays, you don't work Fridays. If you don't answer after five, you don't answer after five, you know, it's stuff like that. Um, and I think last but not least, when it comes to burnout, 
I think that it's always important to define success for yourself. Like, I think that it's very easy in this online space and especially in the coaching industry, for sure, of like, you know, 100K launches, I made a million dollars in 30 seconds, you know, that kind of stuff to let other people create success for you. Um, and if you don't take those moments to define it for yourself, um, it'll be a rude awakening. Um, mm -hmm. And you will find yourself burnt out and you will find yourself um, losing that, like that light and that excitement that you have for your business and for the people that you serve. Um, so really just getting clear and defining that um, for you and know that it can evolve over time. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be that forever. Um, but know, you know, what you want. That's, that's lovely advice. So not comparing yourself too much to others, right? Yeah, Definitely not. Mm. For sure. For sure. It's easy to do so. I agree. I agree. So um, could you share any of your future plans um, or any upcoming projects that our audience might be interested in? Yeah. So I am, let's see, future plans. I am looking forward to, and I hope people like implement this in their lives. I don't know. I haven't done yet. So we'll see. I don't even know if I can make it, but I'm trying to have a light summer. Um, so whether that looks like, you know, a three day work week, you know, but, you know, keeping it kind of light, um, that's like a project that I'm intentionally leaning into. Uh, I am teaching a content planning workshop at the end of the month. Um, I also have a group coaching program called the Courageous Content Academy for female coaches and service providers to help you create profitable content in 90 days or less. Um, our doors open and close throughout the year. Um, and then there is something that I'm working on right now, kind of head down. Um, that's more of an in-person experience. Um, so I'm super excited um, to teach content and just help more people show up and show out um, on a personal level. So I hopefully can launch that at the end of the year. Well, you definitely show up for yourself, which is amazing to see you're such an inspiration. And um, thank you so much for your time, Jay. Um, I think that, you know, I wouldn't want to ask you any other questions. I want this kind of, you know, your last few sentences to, to come, you know, into focus. Um, so thank you so, so much for your time today. I really, we really appreciate it. Um, thank you for your insights and your advice. I'm sure that our audience, you know, will benefit a lot from, from hearing what you had to say. It was amazing to speak to you today. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you for having me and just thank you for everything that you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you for using Clockify and for, you know, taking the time today. It was amazing to meet you. Thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed this interview as much as we did. Make sure that you follow us on our social media and follow our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm.